the vision that really led that great meeting in Finland just recently, that vision come when I was in Georgia passing here on a train. I seen a little boy being raised from the dead. I went to down in Miami and there predicted it before thousands of people. Was anybody at the Miami meeting is here present tonight when I predict I see some hands going up here? Here? That's good. Well, that's fine. You remember what I said? Told how the boy would be looking. He'd be killed by an automobile accident. There'd be stones laying lap like that and green timbers standing up. The little boy would have kind of what we call a crock haircut, brown eyes. His foot would be run through his little stock and so forth. That's just the way it was. I predicted it all around over the United States. Two years later, I was in Helsinki, Finland. We went from there up to Kolpio, that's in the Lapland. Coming down off the mountain one day, I seen we was having a marvelous meeting, and we went up there to show me the tower where they used to watch from the Germans and come in and, and bomb their little city over there and, and the Russians. And on my road down, I seen where a, a American-made automobile had struck two little children, hit one under the chin and knocked him over against the tree and crushed his brain against the tree, the fender, and the other one run right over the other little boy and rolled him up under him and kicked him way out across the road. And he was laying dead with some coats over him. And the people in Finland, they, they live in the city and, and the farm out in the country and walk back and forth. Very poor people. And I, Brother Moore and Brother Gordon Lindsay and them went over to take a look at the little boy. And uh, they come back and they were crying. They said, Brother Bram, you ought to go see him. I said, I don't want to see him. I've been gone to France and England and many places, and I had a, my little Billy Paul was just about that age then. I was homesick to see him, and I, I didn't want to go see that little dead boy. So finally they persuaded me to go over, and when I went to look at the little lad, I looked down at him, and my heart was breaking to see the little fellow, and I turned away. And when I turned away, something laid his hand on my shoulder. I thought it was Brother Lindsay, and I looked around, there was nobody around me at all, and the hand was still on my shoulder. See how stupid a preacher can be? So I looked down, and I couldn't make it out what it was. And I looked again, and I said, would you raise that coat back? They'd gone to get the father and mother. And I just thought how that little father and mother's going to feel when they come in and found their little boy laying there dead. And he'd been dead about 30 minutes then. And they'd gone out in the country to get the father and mother. And I said, well, could I look at that again? So the interpreter spoke, and they raised it up. And I thought, well, where? And I had to look up, and here come that rock slapping down like this, and them green timbers. I see the little crock hair cut, little brown eyes set back. Every bone in his body was broken, and his foot run through his sock. It was that boy perfectly. And I said, Brother Moore, come here. You and Brother Lindsay, look in the fly leaf of your Bible. I said, what's the matter? I said, read the fly leaf of your Bible. I asked everybody to write in the fly leaf. He looked down there and said, a little boy. Be. He said, well, Brother Brown, that's the boy. I said, that's him. Oh, my. What a feeling. I don't care how many. You could take every scientist in the world and stand in there, and every demon out of torment could be standing there. It's going to happen anyhow. Wow. Don't take faith in. God's already said it. It's going to be done. I said, if that little boy isn't on his feet in the next five minutes, I'm a false prophet. See? And we knelt down there, and all of them got back, and the main man of the city, chief man, something equivalent to a mayor here in the, in the state. He was standing there, they backed over away, and I knelt down just the way the vision told me and prayed for the little lad and said, Lord God of heavens and earth, over in the homeland, you showed me this vision while passing through Georgia one night. I said, I pray to thee, Lord God, that now that you will confirm the word that they might know that you're still the Lord Jesus, and that Finland might know that you're the resurrection of the dead, and laid my hands over on the little boy, according to the way he showed it, it has to be everything just the way the vision was. And I called for death to give his little life back. He jumped up again, screaming, running around. Hallelujah. Right. That's all over Finland. I've got it at home by the mayor's signature and everything. It went out over radio. That night you couldn't even get into the place. For six or eight blocks, they had Finnish soldiers out there guarding the way. Now, I want to tell you something, friends. I'm not a politician. But they say there's no Christians in Russia. That's an error. There was those Russians. If you live in Russia, it'd be 40 miles from where you was born. That you have to have a visa. Many of those fine Christians come over there. And when they were standing on the street, when them Finnish soldiers bring me down, they stood at attention with their Russian flute and the tears running down their cheeks. They said, I'll accept a God like that. <laughs> That's right. See, they're just part of creeds and farms. That's all. Anybody that's, that's mentally bound to receive a real, true, and living God that raises the dead, certainly they will.